Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 9. In this exercise, we're going to apply some of the things that you learned about building corridors to the Madison Lane alignment. Um, the first task we need to complete is to develop an alternate version of the assembly, one that excludes the curb and gutter and replaces it with a grass strip. So what we want is two 12 foot or four meter lanes if you're working in the metric data set and a three foot grass strip sloped downward at two percent and we're going to use the same daylighting that we were using before to um, to handle the tie to the existing ground surface. So the way that I'm going to accomplish that is to begin by copying the assembly that I already have. So I'm going to copy. Notice I only selected the assembly baseline. Everything else will come with it. And I'm going to copy that right down to a spot below the original assembly. Now the part that we want to omit is the curb and gutter. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And using a, just basic AutoCAD commands, I'm going to select the curb, press the delete key, and just like that, it's gone. I'll do the same thing on the right side. Okay, so that takes care of that part. What we need to do now is add a grass strip just off the left and the right edges of the pavement. And that grass strip needs to be three feet wide and it needs to slope down at 2%. To begin accomplishing that, I first need to bring up my tool palette. So I'll go to the Home tab, open my tool palettes window. And here are my sub-assemblies. I'm going to turn off docking so that I can tuck this up in the corner here. And I'm going to go to the generic sub-assemblies. And I'm going to use a generic sub-assembly called Link, Width, and Slope. This is a, a great all-purpose sub-assembly. does exactly what it sounds like. It's when I want to put a link in place that's generic in purpose and has a width and a slope that I want to define. So I'm going to click on that. And that'll bring up my properties window. Let me just slide this over where you can see it. And I'll turn off docking for that as well. And before I insert it, I want to actually set the parameters. So uh, we'll do the left side first since that's actually where I'm zoomed in. And I want the width to be 3 feet. Slope I want to be minus 2. And I want to use the insert option. So look down here on the command line. This is actually a new feature in 2013. I want to insert a subassembly right after the lane. And we'll actually kind of wedge it in between two subassemblies. So I'll click the insert option. Select the subassembly to insert after, and you can see how it pops it right in there uh, after the after the lane subassembly. Now, that before and after, the way you figure that out is you work from the center line or from the baseline here out. So this is first, this is second, this is third. So this is after this one, and this one is after this one. So that's where the before and after comes from. So now to do the other side, I'm just going to change the side to right. Let me pan over this way a little bit. If I hit enter, now I can pick the assembly and it'll put it in afterwards. All right, so now we've got the lane, the grass strip, and the daylighting. The curb is gone, and that meets the requirements of the of the first task, which is to create a new subassembly or a new assembly consist of two 12-foot lanes and a three-foot grass strip sloped downward at 2% using the same daylighting that was used before. So now I've got my original assembly with the curbs and my new assembly which has, instead of the curbs, the grass strip. And that takes care of the first task. So now that we've got the alternate assembly in place for Madison Lane, let's go ahead and build a corridor for Madison Lane and then we'll move on to the next task which is to deal with this bus turnout right here. So I'll go to the home tab and launch the corridor command. I'll call
call this corridor Madison Lane. And my alignment will be Madison Lane. My profile will be Madison Lane FGCL. And my assembly, I didn't give it a name. It's currently called Subdivision Road 2, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to give that a real name like um, Subdivision Road without curbs or something like that. Target surface will be EG for existing ground. And I'm just going to uncheck the box to set baseline and region parameters, and we'll go ahead and just click OK and let the corridor build as it is. All right, so our next task in this exercise is to include a, uh, a turnout for this little bus pull-off right here. So we want to use the red polyline near station 3 plus 0, 0. That's this guy right here. And we're going to use that to create the pull-off area. So since we've been given a polyline to work with, this is a great opportunity to, to do a target transition. So I'm going to click on the corridor and hit my Edit Targets button. Ask me to select the region, which I only have one in this corridor, but I still need to pick it. And my width or offset target. Now, let's look at the stationing so we can figure out left and right. The stationing increases toward the west. So that means this bus pull-off that I'm creating is on the right lane. So I want to take a look at the right lane transition which is right here. I'll click that. I'm going to add a polyline as my target. So I'll select from drawing, select the red polyline and hit enter. And that should be all I need. I'm going to click OK. OK again. It's going to push the corridor out along that transition and create the bus pull off, which is what my task is for, uh, for the second task. So that completes the second task. And for the next one, we're going to look at creating a corridor surface for Madison Lane. To create the corridor surface, I'll begin by escaping out of the command that I'm currently in. Then I'll select the corridor and simply hit Corridor Surfaces on the ribbon. I'll add a surface, and I'm going to call it Madison Lane FG. Right now, the surface style is set to contours 1 and 5 design. I think that's good. And the data I want to add are the top links, which is what it's already set to. I can choose feature lines or links. I want to use links, and I want to use the top ones. So I'll hit the plus sign. It adds the top links to the surface. Now, normally, I would go over to boundaries and get that taken care of. But just to show you what's going to happen, I'll click OK. It wants me to rebuild the corridor. That's fine and there you can see the surface that it has created. It looks pretty good, but we've got some extra contours out here on the outer edges that, um, that don't belong. So we want to clean that up a little bit. So we'll go back into Corridor Surfaces, and on the Boundaries tab, I'm going to right click and say Use Corridor Extents as Outer Boundary. And just like that, it's going to clean up the edges, and we're not going to have those contours out in space that don't belong. And you can see the corridor cont contours are tying together nicely with the existing contours. And that's all there is to creating a surface out of the corridor. And that takes care of the third task. For the fourth task, we want to create an intersection between Logan Court and Madison Lane. So this is going to be your first actual look at the intersection tool if you haven't done so on your own. Now the first thing I want to do is pull back the Madison Lane corridor as it is right now to kind of make room for the intersection. So I'm going to pull it back to about here. And that's more space than I need, but that's OK. Um, you saw how easy that was to do, to simply change the end of that region and move the end of the corridor back and forth wherever you really want to. Now I'm just going to launch the intersection wizard and kind of let it do its thing. So on the Home tab, I'm going to click Intersections and then Create Intersection. My intersection point is between the two alignments. And anything that comes up that I can accept as default, I'm going to. So there's my default styles. I'll click Next there. Notice it's 
chosen the finish ground center line profiles for each alignment. We've got parameters that control the offsets, notice the 12 foot lanes. We've got parameters that control the curb returns, notice the 25 foot fillet radii. All right, I'm not going to go through each one of these commands in detail uh, because there's a lot here. And we've also got parameters that control the transitions between the two profiles. Next we've got our what's called a, an assembly set. Um, it's actually going to create a large number of different regions and it's going to apply several different assemblies. You can see the assemblies listed here. And the, the end result, the intersection, is going to be a pretty complicated thing. It's going to be multiple regions, multiple different assemblies pieced together and tied together. But the good news is it does all that for us. It's an automated command that builds that complex arrangement for us. So I'll create the intersection. It's going to think and work for a little while. And when it's done, I should have a fully developed corridor where that intersection is. So there you can see the intersection it has created. Now that that's taken place, I can actually grab this and pull it right up against the other part of the corridor. Kind of close that gap a little bit. I can take this and drag it to the end. And we can simply just continue building this corridor out. I can even pull this one down. At some point I could create another intersection here and pull everything together and then build surfaces and, and continue um, building and combining until the corridor model is complete. So that is how you use the intersection wizard in Civil 3D. And that is our final task. So that completes our additional exercise for Chapter 9.